Hello. In this video, I'm going to show the integration between the Eldray Tool Suite and ST's Stiller Studio. Now, ST have very kindly lent me this board here. It's an SR6 G7 evaluation board, and it has a Stiller device, which has six Cortex R52 Plus cores. It's a big board, and as you can see, I've taken a photo here with an STM32 nuclear board just to show the, the size of this. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is to take one of the projects that's provided with the SDK, analyze it, and I'd like to be able to execute the code, obtain coverage, and I'd like to be able to then complement that by maybe doing some unit testing. And in order to be able to communicate with the board, I'm using this Stellar Link. Now, this is the LDRA launcher, and I've analyzed two projects. This is one that I've created myself, and this is one that came with the SDK. And what I wanted to be able to do is to analyze these projects. So the starting point is to run the build import. And inside the build import, I'm going to run a batch file that is going to basically take this particular project. It's going to do a clean, and then it's going to do a build. Here we can see it's building it for core zero. And there we can see it's building all the source files. It's now generated the executable. And now we're going to see that we have a target. So there we can see the executable that was generated. We can see all the, the source files here. And we can also see the include paths as well as the preprocessor symbols. So we have everything we need now in order to be able to analyze this code. And all I need to do is just open it with TB Vision. Now to save time, I've already done that, and I'm going to open the project, and here I've analyzed just a subset of the files. And what? let's go and take a look and maybe see, is this compliant to a coding standard? Let's go and view a summary report. In this particular case, we can see we have a lot of violations. What are these violations? Well, let's take a look, and we can see a lot are macros that are not used, or the procedures that are not called. So maybe we should remove some of these macros and remove some of these procedures that are not called or referenced in the code. Now, what about um, executing this code on the target and getting an idea of how much coverage can we obtain? So I've already done that. Unfortunately, I didn't have the amplifier that is needed on this board, but I've still got some coverage. So let's go and take a look at a system uh, call graph. And on that, I've put this into a mode where we can see the coverage we have obtained. So we can see there are some functions where we have a 100% statement, 100% branch uh, decision coverage. And I've also got the MCDC, but uh, let's scroll down and we can see here, here we've got some functions which we haven't yet got 100%. Scrolling down further, we can see a lot of functions here, which looks like they're not called. And if I scroll down even further, we're going to have a lot of inline functions, again, which are not called. Well, the ones where we got some coverage are more interesting. Here we can see we're highlighting this particular function, and we can see very clearly in green the parts we've executed, in red the parts we haven't executed, in yellow a branch that we haven't taken. Let's take a look at another particular function here, and just clicking on it, and again we can see very clearly which bits we've executed and which bits we've not executed. Okay, so what else? Well, what about generating various reports? Well, let's take a look at that. And once again, I've already done this to save time. And here we have a, a large number of reports. And we could start off by taking a look at the, the test manager report. So here we've got the code review. So we can see violations in every file. We've got the quality review. We're looking at various metrics like the cyclomatic complexity, the number of comments, number of exit points. And we scroll down further. And here we've got the test verification. So that's where we can go <clears throat> and take a look at maybe, let's go into the gtm.c file, and we can see the coverage we've obtained. And here we've got 100% coverage for these functions. These we haven't invoked. And this one, well, we're missing a branch, so we've never had this equal to, to false. What else we got? Well, we could take a look at the annotated code, and we could take a look at uh, this particular file here. And as we scroll down, we can see we've got the various violations inlined in the code. These are red because they're required, but we've got here one that's yellow and it's just advisory. Right, what's next? Well, I'd like to be able to perform some unit testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down and I'm going to switch 
Okay, so here we have the simple application. And what I want to be able to do is to execute the code. So I'm going to go and I've already generated the instrument program. I've built it. I now want to execute it and then get the coverage. Now, in this particular case, the main never ends. So I basically told it to run. And when this function gets hit 10 times to stop and get the data off the target. So let's start that. So this is already built the instrumented code. So now it's downloading to the target. And in this particular case, we're using the open OCD that comes with Stella Studio. And just waiting for that to initialize all six cores. And then we're going to run GDB on just the first core. So there we can see it takes a little bit of time to, to, to run, but we should find this is going to start setting some, some breakpoints. And we should get a breakpoint set on that function that I specified. And there we can see we've set this temporary breakpoint. So just wait for that to, to execute. And then we should be able to get the, the results back from the target. So there we can see using the GDB, we'll be able to get the results back. We're analyzing it. We're generating various reports. And now we should be able to take a look and view the coverage. So let's take a look. And here we can see very clearly the coverage we've obtained. So I can sort and I can see this one. We've only got 79% coverage. I can view the flow diagram. And there we see very clearly in green the parts of code we've executed in the red, the parts we haven't executed. What I'd like to do now is to complement that by doing some unit testing. So let me close this down and let's go and invoke the TB run. So here, <coughs> starting up TB run and TB run is the unit testing tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a sequence that I've previously created for testing this function integer to ASCII. So there we can see I've got seven test cases. For each of these, I've got inputs and expected outputs. So let's go and run this on the target. So first of all, what that's done is it's generated a, a program. It's built it. It's downloading it to the target. Once again, we're using the open OCD in order to be able to communicate with the target. And then we're running GB. And there we can see that's starting up. Again, we'll wait for the breakpoints to get set. And then that will run and we'll be able to get the results back from the target. OK, so that's uh, running. It shouldn't take too long to run. And then we'll get the results back. And we should be able to see, hopefully, that these tests have, have passed. And we should also be able to look at the coverage. And hopefully, we'll have 100% coverage for that function, integer to ASCII. OK, so there we can see all the tests have passed. So that's good. And now we should be able to take a look at the coverage. There, we take a look at integer to ASCII. We've got the coverage we obtained uh, previously. And now we've got 100% coverage. And of course, the combined coverage is also 100%. So hopefully that's given you a, a quick overview of how we can integrate with SD's Stellar Studio and Stellar Devices. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you.